Today, we're going to talk about one of the best remedies for your lungs, and I'm talking about the lower respiratory system. Whether you have a lung infection or asthma or even COPD, uh, this could be very beneficial for you. So what do you have in common with these three conditions? Well, you have inflammation, you have an immune reaction, and you have vasoconstriction where your lungs are tightening and you can't get enough air. And the common treatment for lung conditions is bronchocorticosteroids, okay? The problem is when you take it over time, you become resistant. So in other words, this steroid works less and less and less. Now, the problem with myself, not for a lung infection, but for poison ivy, is when I took steroids every single year through my 20s, I noticed it worked less and less and less to the point where one year it didn't work at all. So the more you use steroids, the more they don't work. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your lungs in relationship to vitamin D. Vitamin D is a very potent remedy for a lot of things, including inflammation in your lungs. However, there's some mixed studies that show some positive results, some less results in relationship to asthma and lung infections. But in general, vitamin D is antimicrobial. It helps modulate or regulate your immune system. And also, it's a powerful anti-inflammatory. It also supports the smooth muscle of your lungs, so it can help you breathe better. But my question is, why would it work in some people but not others? Okay, well, one interesting piece of data you need to know about is this right here. It's called polymorphism. More and more people are becoming aware of this condition in relationship to your vitamin D receptor. Okay, now you can get a genetic test to determine if you have a problem with this but basically, to make it really simple, your vitamin D receptors are not receiving vitamin D like they should. So even though you're taking a certain amount of vitamin D, whether it's 4,000 international units or 6,000 international units, you may not see the benefits from vitamin D because the receptor is not receiving vitamin D. So that might explain why some people might experience benefits where someone else might not unless they do this test and find out they need to greatly up the dosage of vitamin D um, to even 50,000 IUs every single day to see the results. In fact, there was one study, and I'm gonna put a lot of studies down below, you can look these up, where they use 50,000 international units of vitamin D every single day for a few months, and they showed uh, great results with asthma. But the point is that if you have a problem with your vitamin D receptor, the normal amounts of vitamin D are not going to be effective. Then there's something else, infrared, okay? Infrared light therapy has been used for a lot of things. It can actually inhibit bronchoconstriction and help you breathe better. It's a powerful anti-inflammatory. It can even help decrease fibrosis in COPD. Plus, infrared can actually decrease um, pollution in the air. All right, and then we have another thing called UV light, okay, ultraviolet light. Ultraviolet light can help sterilize or kill germs. They even use UV in helping purify water or killing microbes in your water pipes. So UV can help decrease pathogens in the air, which might otherwise overload the immune system. All right, so now the big question is, what can you do to combine all of these things at once to have the perfect remedy for your lungs? Well, it just so happens to be the sun, okay? The sun gives you UV light. It also gives you UVB radiation that actually helps you increase vitamin D naturally, and it's very inexpensive. It's actually free. The sun also gives you infrared therapy. So that's naturally built into the sun, which has a direct effect on the lungs and inflammation and your immune system, as well as stimulating melatonin, okay? Now I'm talking about melatonin in the mitochondria, not the pineal gland, which is a whole different topic. I'm talking about the other benefit of how infrared can increase melatonin in all of your cells. And so this is something new that you may have never heard about before, but melatonin has another function other than helping you sleep at night. It has a powerful antioxidant function in all of the cells in the mitochondria. It has a lot of benefits. One is for the immune system. There's, a, there's another study that shows that it can actually help decrease 
coughing, okay? So getting more sun can give you all of these benefits. Also, one side note, vitamin D helps decrease corticosteroid resistance. So if you've used steroids in the past and they don't work, vitamin D can help correct and reverse some of that. Now, here's some things you need to know about the sun. Obviously, you don't want to go out in the sun until you burn, right? You want to get a certain dose of the sun, the spectrum of the sun, to the point where maybe you get a little bit of a tan, but not overdoing it. Now, one really interesting thing. When you walk into the woods, all right, you'll see a lot of green plants below the canopy of trees. So you'll see them in the shade growing fine. And you're probably wondering, now I thought it takes the sunlight to make chlorophyll, this green stuff in the plant. Well, it just so happens that this wavelength, infrared, can penetrate through this canopy of tree layer and go right down into these other plants. It can also penetrate through your clothing, all right? It can actually penetrate through your skull, about two inches into your brain, and it goes into your body. So that being said, you don't always have to get skin exposure from the sun. Just by being out in the sun, even if you have a hat, sunglasses, and layers, that infrared will penetrate your clothing and get into your body and improve your lungs. So what am I saying? I'm saying be out in the sun more often if you have weakness within your lungs. And you also get the extra benefit of being in fresh air because there's a lot of pollutants that are indoors that can also negatively affect your lungs. Now, if you haven't seen my new video on melatonin, that would be a really interesting next video for you to watch. I put it right here.